I have hopes that my singing will break down some of the hate and fear that divide the white and black people in this country. Mahalia Jackson. So let's talk a little bit about Mahalia Jackson and how important she was to the uh, I Have a Dream speech given by Martin Luther King. Now I know I normally do unsung uh, black women in American history, but I think it's important to discuss this because I don't think a lot of people realize how important black women and the LGBTQ community community were to the March on Washington and even to the speeches themselves. Okay, um, When it comes to the LGBTQ community and their impact and their contributions to the March and the speeches, they will be discussed in June in honor of Pride Month. Woo! I'm very excited. Okay. Um, but today, let's talk about one black woman in particular, Mahalia Jackson. Okay. For those who don't know, Mahalia Jackson is an American gospel singer, and she is largely considered one of the most influential vocalists of the 20th century. She came to be referred to as the Queen of Gospel. Now, her career spanned 40 years, and she was very important to the development and the spread of gospel blues in black churches throughout the United States. And if you've been to a black church, do you know what gospel blues, you know what that is, you've heard it, okay? You were probably there all day long, but you heard it. Yeah. yeah. Now, we will go more in depth about Mahalia Jackson when we do our series, Lady Sings the Blues. And it'll be more than just Billie Holiday. Uh, it will include Mahalia Jackson and other black women who were singing during that time period. Okay. But for today, I wanted to share some of the uh, moments, the incidents of racism and discrimination that Mahalia Jackson experienced even after she rose to fame. Okay. One of them being that for a large portion of her career, she was forced to sleep in her car when traveling through Jim Crow South. We talked about that, I think, when we talked about Chitlin Circuit. For a black performer, regardless of how famous they were, there were hotels that would not accept them. If they did, they had to go through the back. Restaurants that they couldn't eat at. Um, grocery stores they couldn't shop in. So a lot of times, she and her singer, singers, would have their own food with them and sleep in the car. It was a Cadillac, but sleep in the car because they w were not able to find a room. Okay? She bought a house in an all-white neighborhood in Chicago. The day that she moved in, someone shot out her windows. Yeah. After appearing on live TV, she was not able, the very next day, she was not able to get a taxi cab or go shopping along Canal Street in Chicago. Coincidentally, it was one of my favorite streets in Chicago. Despite all of this, she uh, was intent on integrating her audiences, telling the ushers, let black people and white people sit where they want to. If they want to sit next to each other, let them. Okay. So let's talk about her and Martin Luther King. Now, Mahalia Jackson had already been using her talent and her money to help support the civil rights movement by the time she met Martin Luther King Jr. in 1953. Upon meeting each other, they became fast friends. By the time he was assassinated, they had become close friends. 
she was one of his favorite gospel singers. I mean, she's Mahalia. Of course she is, right? Now for this part, this part of the story, I want you to close your eyes. I know the last time was a little traumatizing, but this time it won't be as traumatizing. I want you to close your eyes. Picture it. August 28th, 1963. Martin Luther King stands in front of a crowd of about 250,000 people. He stands and begins to speak. He calls for the end of racism and he cites the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, the Emancipation Proclamation, all requesting, asking for, demanding an end to racism. He's, you know, done. However, he hears a familiar voice ring out from the crowd. And it's the voice of his close friend, Mahalia Jackson. And she says, tell them about the dream, Martin. And this is when Martin Luther King shares with us his dream. And this is only a part of what he said, a part of what his dream is. I still have a dream. It's a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Now here's my question. What would have happened if Mahalia Jackson was not there? What would have happened if she did not cry out from the crowd? Tell them about your dream, Martin. <laughs> 